So is, is there a time, because I mean, we've gotten emails, when you have to actually renew the trademark, do they expire at some point? And what what is that process like when you have to renew it? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, unlike your annual reports, because a lot of people think, well, I got to do this every year, like I do my, you know, my corporations and things. No, it's a trademark um, registration. After you have it registered, you have to maintain the registration between your fifth and sixth year anniversary, and then your ninth and tenth year anniversary, and then every 10 years after, right? So what you're showing the government is that you're still using a brand. So remember I told you guys earlier, Coca-Cola was registered in 1893. Now, the thing is, Coca-Cola, when they filed the trademark, they filed it for their actual logo at the time, right, with the cursive writing and things like that. So now every 10 years, Coca-Cola have to show that they're still using that same logo in order to keep that historically um, marked trademark. And so sometimes you'll see them come out with a retro line and things like that, and that's to continue to show the actual use. And, and you know, sometimes we get on this topic because people be like, well, should I trademark my logo or should I just trademark my name right and I say sometimes you should do both it depends but the thing is when you just do your logo that's the brand that's the trademark so it's so important like a McDonald's McDonald's did the trademark in standard characters where they own McDonald's and standard characters but they also own the logo with the golden arches for McDonald's because McDonald's has changed their logos about nine different times over the past 70 years so a trademark will last as long as you use it you will not lose it but you do have to keep up the registration maintenance and each time you renew you pay you pay absolutely <laughs> but but here's the thing because i know why you're asking that question because you're probably getting a lot of spam mail asking you to pay these random people so you got to be careful with that because okay when we file our trademarks the uspto is public record right so all you're going to get all type of spam mail you're going to get all type and this is why it's important that you're represented by an attorney because the government will never contact you they're going to contact your attorney right but the spammers and the scammers they'll send you saying you got to maintain your um registration at year four so you could go ahead and pay them. And then now a lot of people trademarks get canceled because they think they paid the government to maintain it when they paid a scammer. So it's very important. And I want to just say this. As of November of 2023, they are now calling people. When you file your trademark because the government asks for your phone number, they're calling demanding that you pay $425 or they're going to cancel your trademark. They're acting like they're the government and that type of do not fall for the scam um hang up automatically and tell them you know you will contact the uspto directly a government official from the uspto would never demand you pay them over the phone you have to pay your fees through the website so what's a service mark so a service mark is basically like i'm a lawyer right and so i offer a service it's just a word you can use interchangeably with a trademark so you can say i have a service mark or a trademark it doesn't so matter it's the same thing it's the same thing yeah but you wouldn't say a, a service mark for a product, basically. What about, so we got the different categories here, mm -hmm. but some of these brands are global. And so the international trademark, this is something that people have little to, to no knowledge about, right? Yeah. And having to trademark internationally requires a lot of things, mm -hmm. capital number one, but mm -hmm. making sure you have the trademark in each different country. Talk about that process. That is so very important, especially if you are going to have an international brand, right? Um, I'm working with some clients in Ghana right now that has a really huge brand where they do a really big festival. And, you know, a lot of us are going over there for the festival in December, right? And so it's not only <laughs> important. Think I think we, think we might know those guys. Yes. Yeah. And it's, <laughs> but it's so important that, you know, we protect that brand um, not only here in the States, but also in Africa as well but the thing is so there is a um there is a treaty that the government has with about 80 other different countries where you can actually it's called the madrid protocol where you can actually when you file your trademark with the u.s you can apply with all these different countries but you have to pay all these different country fees and things like that now that is available to you i don't recommend it 
The reason I don't recommend it is because each country has their own laws. They have their own different processes. And also, too, we want to clear those marks in those countries. So when I have a client that wants to do an international brand, we hire local counsel in those countries. And you'll be surprised. Like, we did a trademark in India. And just because of the conversion rate, it was very affordable for my client to do what he needed to do in there. But it, it's just a different process. And, you know, we want someone local of the land so that they can guide us and counsel us, right? I wouldn't be a good attorney if I say, yeah, let's just put it through the system and not blindly, right? We need to clear that and we need counsel and advisement from that region to help us with that. So how much does it cost to trademark something? So it could cost, well, let me tell you this. The filing fees with the government starts at $250 and can go up to like $425, right? Mm -hmm. Depending on who you work with, right? There's, a you know, attorneys that charge, you know, from here all the way to $5,000. Now, I can tell you what we charge at our firm. We charge $1,500 to trademark a mark that includes the filing, um, that includes the class, and that includes us doing the research. What's the class? What is that? What is that? That's, that's the 45, so one class, Seven. right? And so if they wanted to add additional classes, it's an additional $1,000 so if to I want to do media education apparel three classes 15 mm -hmm. no because media actually falls under the same class as education okay. right so like well I, so my favorite okay i'll tell you my favorite class is class 41 and it's the education and entertainment class right and so some of my clients love me and the reason being is because they'll come to me and be like rosina i want to trademark for coaching because i'm a coach i be like okay but you also have a podcast. You also have this course. You're also educating people. You do events. You, you're you hiring people to come speak. And all that can be covered under that one class. So, um, okay. So people can do it themselves, though, too, right? Like people can do it. Zoom.com, something like that. Well, see, I didn't want to say their name, but you said it. So since you said their name, <laughs> um, <laughs> let, let a lot of people name. fall short there as yeah. well. Yeah. And they, because they're not going to, offer you legal counsel and advisement. They, they they say you can pay more for that and they'll connect you with someone, right? But it's 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 kind of chaotic because you don't have that relationship. You know, and people always ask us, what's the difference between you and LegalZoom? And I tell them the value is in a relationship. You know, I run a law firm, right? I care about my clients and, you know, I'm promoting my client's business. My client's success is my success, right? If I'm in a situation where I can present an opportunity to someone who can help bring my client along, I'm going to do that for my client, right? But also too, I'm like, so with, with those type of companies, you're filling out that paperwork right and they're going to just take the information you gave them and put it into the system right but again like i just said i have clients come to me and be like rosalina i'm doing i want to do coaching but then i see so much more for them right so it's the custom made like you know it's not this cookie cutter service i'm it's like me having my cpa right i'm able to have conversations with my cpa like look cpa I want to buy a house this year. And because I want to buy a house, right, I need my taxes to show you this. And I want my, you know, my business to show profit because I want to file my taxes. Yes, I really don't want to pay a lot of money. But in order to qualify to get for this loan, I need, you know, my taxes to look a certain type of way. So it's that value of the relationship. Instead of somebody going and filing your taxes and then writing everything off as a deduction, and now it looks like your business had no value, and now it's like, I look like a, a business owner who is not generating money. So 